Hi, everyone. How are you today? Terry Harden, Walt Disney's legendary Imagineer. I've been in Ghostbusters. I've worked on Men in Black. I've worked on some. Basically, I'm known as a pop icon. Yeah, that's what they say. <laughs> I don't say it, but I'm embracing it. How are you today? Welcome to Terry Harden's Ask Me Anything on Terry TV. Today also commemorates the first time that I'm actually going to make it more like a TV or a radio station today. I'm going to do a very short session because I need to go see my dad. Um, um, I just got to go and it needs to be this morning. So um, I'm not going to go into details. I don't bore you with the details, but just know that I am uh, um, having some challenges with uh, my parents now and their health. And I need to keep, and I am the one that keeps uh, an eye on that. So that's what that's about. But hi, this is my AMA. You're welcome to ask me anything over here. If you want to, I'll probably go for about uh, a half hour to 45 minutes today instead of my hour that I try to stick to. Sometimes I go longer, but uh, feel free to ask me questions and I'll come back and I'll look at the, at the feed and see if I can answer you after, or we'll pick up on the following Friday deal. Okay, so the new Terry TV, I want to talk about all kinds of things like a television station will do. I will look into news subjects and talk about all kinds of things, not just be so Disney centric because I keep telling you I'm not Disney centric, even though I'm a Disney Imagineer. Uh, and you are welcome to ask me Disney questions and keep it Disney centric in your life. But I'm going to start to talk about other things. Uh, I am going to stay away from politics and religion. Uh, but other than that, uh, I will be talking about all kinds of fun things, uh, you know, things of that nature. So, uh, oh, my. Okay. All right. Anyway, uh, sorry, my phone is on for my dad. So forgive me if I take a peek every so often uh, about that. But anyway, okay. So today... Uh, you can ask me anything. I have some updates uh, before we get started on Burt Bacharach. And can you guess? Feel free to guess here if you think you know my favorite song that Burt Bacharach did. Feel free to guess over here if you want to. If you don't want to guess, I will tell you a little bit later. But uh, feel free to guess. And um, he did so many, so you may be challenged. But uh, and those of you who think you know me uh, may say, I think I know. But then others may say, I don't know what you're talking about, Terry. And uh, we'll go from there. So basically, uh, yeah, we'll 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 talk about Burt Bacharach and things like that. But the first thing I wanted to do was many of you have been writing and messaging me and asking me questions about run Disney races. OK, now many of you are going to say what I didn't ask that question, but I think a good amount of you did because I have told you that for the past I guess since the pandemic, I've been running virtually because how else could you run? Well, now they're doing both virtual and live races. Okay. So Florida started doing their Disney races. I think starting, I think they got started back up if I'm not mistaken um, in 2021. I could be wrong, but in any case, just the beginning of this year, they decided, well, for the beginning of this year, they decided to do their marathon weekend in Florida, of which I was an integral part of for quite some time. Just let me make sure this is not a message from my father's nurse. And it is not. Okay, good. All right. So we're good. We're good. We're good right now. Um, and so I've been running virtually on my treadmill. I like running on my treadmill because I don't see necessarily, I don't feel how far I'm going because it's a treadmill. It just goes, you know, some people might find it boring. They'd rather be outside. But for me, when I'm running marathons and things like that, I put on a movie, I get involved in the movie and I just do my little pace. Okay. I have to tell you that my little pace is more like this because I walk about a 13 minute mile and that's all I really need to do. So there's no reason to run. If I'm on a hill, I usually run down it. My doctor would prefer that I don't do that. So uh, this virtual run in all counts, I can keep it air conditioning and cool. I always know the weather and I can use the bathroom when needed. I can drink water whenever I want. I can pause, have lunch and then get back on and keep my time rolling. So it's, it's something that I love doing. 
I can't do live. The one thing that's sad about not being able to do live is I don't get to meet. I don't get to run with all of you. But honestly, I have a chalk walk for that Children's Hospital of Orange County charity event that I do with a team and I get to walk with everybody there. That's happening this year. So I'm very excited because I'll get to be with people of all walks of life. You can use a scooter. You can use a wheelchair. You can um a cane. Uh, it's because it's for anyone and everyone who wants to help this charity. So it's very exciting that the walk is returning this year. We are breathless about it. My team is breathless. And if you're interested in learning about how to join my team, which is the uh, Disney's OUAC Walkers, uh, reach out to me and I will let you know how to do that. Terry at terryharden.com is a great way for you to reach me. Why don't I do a few things to help you with that. So here's terryharden.com and you go here and you can just write to me through this website. This is my website. You can also reach out to me about the Disney's OUAC walkers. You can ask me about them, you know, write, you know, you can reach out to me and ask me a question about the, um, marathon, so on and so forth. You can also ask me about patreon.com slash Terry Harden, where before each broadcast that I do, usually Mondays and Fridays, I speak uh, with my tribe and we talk very frankly. Right now we are working on something that I want to do to celebrate Disney's 100th and they are very much involved with helping me bring that to fruition. That's what happens, and it's only $5 a month. So if you're interested, go here, check it out, and join if you are so inclined. Uh, my suggestion is do pop your foot in for a month, pay $5, see if it looks good, and stay if you like it. And if you don't, at least you tried it, like seeing a movie before you critique it. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's good. Anyway, that's the deal. That's the story. That's what uh, what's happening on my end. OK, so, yeah, so very exciting, super cool. So I thought what I would do is show you the why I like the virtual races. First of all, you get a very cool box. So one of the things I will caution you in doing is I thought I did the uh, marathon, the, the half marathon, the marathon and the 10K. I might have, you know, those three races you, should, you can do. I thought I did it. So I did them virtually. And then I got the box and realized I had only signed up for the marathon. So I didn't really need to run the other two races, but oh, well, <laughs> I wanted to get, uh, be a part of this. And I really couldn't get to Florida in January. So uh, this is a great way to do it because you can run it at home and still be a part of it. So if you're not in the area where they have run Disney races, this is a great way to do it. And look at how cute this box is. I mean, so doggone cute. And what happens is when you open it up, it comes with your stuff. Now, I also ran a wine and dine that featured the villains, and I did do all three races with the villains, and that box was sensational too. Just, you don't get this when you run live, and and I don't get the people part of it, but, you know. So here is the amazing shirt that came to thank me. And really, it's your own word that you run the race. So you want to be sure that you run the races, but it's really up to you. Uh, uh, you just, uh, and it it's just, it's great. It says Walt Disney World 50th on it. And and I always do the long sleeves and the wicking shirts. These are my favorite shirts. And uh, look at how cute that is with everybody running to celebrate 30 years of uh, this race and run Disney. It's just, it's just wonderful. And the main reason I wanted it was I wanted the 30th anniversary medal. So here is the 30th anniversary medal in its little package. And if I open it for you, you can see actually how big it really is. So the virtual races, you sign up for them. Look how big this is. It's like almost as wide as my glasses. But the virtual races, you sign up for them like you would the live races. And this, and then they send it to you after, you know, you pay for it and they send it to you and this spins. I have no idea why it spins, uh, but I guess they thought that would be cool. So, okay. Yay. But anyway, I'll zoom in close. So you can see it. I'm in my office today because I want the shortest distance to my car because as soon as I'm done here, I'm running up to see my dad. So uh, you get to see my office today, which is kind of rare because a lot of times 
I like to broadcast out of my studio and I have a new camera. How do you like it? Nice and bright, right? Yeah, I'm liking it. My husband got it for me as a gift. So there it is. Yay. So there's that. For those of you who asked, what are the virtual oasis and how do you, whoops, how do you sign up for them? You sign up for them just like you do the others. Just, you know, Disney run, run Disney virtual and it should get you there. Um, but I love them. I love the virtual races and the medals are, there's no different medal. It's just some of you, it, it allows more people to run and more people to run who are out of an area, you know, like, let's say like me, I couldn't get to Walt Disney world to celebrate the 30th. So I did the virtual race, but I have to be honest with you. Disneyland is, um, is going to start their races up again. In fact, you may have already signed up for one. And if I do it, I'll probably do it virtually for a while, you know, just, just because I love them. And you get this cool letter, which maybe now that they're doing them live, they will do something cool like this for you guys who are running live. But I don't know. I cannot tell you yes or no, because before nothing like this was ever done. And I love this. I love getting them in these really beautifully designed boxes mailed to me once I've run the race. I just love it. So if you have any more questions about this, you're free to asking here if you have specific questions or hit me up when you think about it. Okay. All right. I just wanted to be sure that you had that and that you um, were able to, I didn't want that to lose that because you guys have been asking me and asking me and asking me. So there you go. Okay. So Burt Bacharach. Woohoo. All right. So let's look at some of the things that you guys have said, and then we'll share some, some Burt Bacharach with you. Okay. All right. Raindrops keep falling on my head. Michelle, you're so cute. Adorable, but no, because you love rain. I do love rain. It's a good guess. It's not right. You're going to laugh when I tell you what it is. Uh, say a little prayer for you. Gosh, we're going to sing for every single one. Nope. But it's a good, another good one. See, the nice thing about this is as you guess, People can see what an amazing career Burt Bacharach had. A genius composer, wrote tons of things for, I believe it was Neil Diamond, right? I think that's 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 who got a lot of of things written because he was he was uh, so amazing, and um, and uh, yeah, uh, just just incredible. But you will you'll laugh when you hear what it is. Happy Friday, everyone. Don't forget to like my classic Disney and classic Disney movies page. Oh, all right, Joe. Okay. All right. Send me a link if you haven't already and join my classic Disney and Disney movies group. How about that? Yeah. All, all for you, all for you, all for you. Okay. So I'll tell you it's the blob. Okay. <laughs> my favorite Burt Bacharach theme is the blob sang by the blobs on a little 45 record so uh here is the 45 record the blob by the blob and that space where that arrow is is where you got this really cool thing that you had to punch in so that it fit on your turntable yes i'm 65 it's uh beware of the blob it creeps and leaps and crawls across the floor and through the door and all around the walls a blotch a splotch beware of the blob beware of the blob it creeps and leaps and see see that's my favorite one and uh i love this movie very very much steve mcqueen in it in the in the what 50s it's a fantastic movie if you've not seen this movie and this movie has been made remade in i believe 1988 which i was involved in as well now i wasn't in that movie the new blob but i was responsible for getting puppeteers and and people uh friends of mine to uh be a part of the blob including my best friend lynette eklund she was very much in a part of that blob the new blob and so the blob is is a lot in my but that hit record and it was a hit record back in the day and uh and the movie made quite a bit of money for steve mcqueen yes it did so uh it's a fantastic fantastic uh film and the theme was written by bird baccarat how about that, Jez? And Mac, Mac, David, Mac David, and it says here for the 1958 
for a blob movie. So I was just off by a couple of years. First big role for Steve McQueen. Yes, indeed. Um, so it, it talks about a giant blob of goo that uh, comes down to earth and terrorizes the town. And if you haven't seen it, you must see it. Now, it's a great popcorn movie. It may make you giggle because of the time. But as a kid, I absolutely, it is one of my favorite, favorite movies. So those of you who know me really well know that the 1950s horror and sci-fi and monster movies are my absolute favorite. My first one as a little girl was The Crawling Eye. And uh, my parents kept trying to put me to bed and make me go to sleep. And then I would get up and watch late night scary movie theater and they would come in and the, the TV would be going. <laughs> and I was asleep in the glow of it. If you've seen Poltergeist, you remember that she wakes up and sees the <laughs> and a hand comes out. I was not, I found no hand, but uh, my parents woke me up and said, Terry, you got to stop getting up in the middle of the night to watch these scary movies. It's not good for you. And of course, like most kids, I didn't listen. I did not listen. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, let's see what else it says. My husband gave me a nice little article to read to you. And so let's see what else it says. Um, it says uh, lands on earth. And well, it gives you some specifics. So I'm not going to give you the specifics because, you know, you may not have seen it. And I want you to see it. There's young people out there. Um, it was a legitimate horror movie by 1950 standards. The song is bouncy and seemed to poke fun at the movie, almost anticipating the cult status that it attained many, many years ago and still holds today. Beware of the blob. It creeps and leaps and slides across the floor and through the door and all around the walls. A blotch, a spot. Beware of the blob. Beware of the blob. It, you know, it's got catchy too. So you can dance and do the whole thing. It became Burt Baccarat's first significant hit as a composer. That I didn't know. So how about that? My favorite tune is his first one as it is hit, his hit tune. He went on to write a lot of ones, including by Bob Burdine's suggestion, Say a Little Prayer. And What the World Needs Now is Love. So guys, how cool is cool, right? Um, cool, 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 right? Cool. Yes. Anyway, I thought it would be a nice thing to share that is not Disney centric, which kicks off Terry TV. Welcome to Terry TV. And that kicks off Terry TV. So uh, I don't know. Is it fun? Tell me in the comments if you thought that was fun um, or you want to share something that you're up to and uh, a song that you loved by Burt Bacharach would be nice. We can talk about that. Uh, but let me share with you just a little bit longer before I run away. Okay. And, uh, and it would be very, very cool. Links to my page and group are included in my comments. That's so nice of you, Joe. Very, very nice of you. Yes. Uh, Alfie is one of Burt Baccarat's favorite songs. Yes, Alfie. What's it going to be, Alfie? Yeah. I didn't think much of the movie, but I thought the song was nice. <laughs> Um, I thought the song was really good. So Bob, you're bringing, and it's interesting because unlike there are composers out there that, uh, you can, um, be super excited about, but you may not necessarily know their body of work. Okay. Uh, and so they could be very, very, uh, uh, famous, but it might just be that in your circles, it's they're famous in circles that aren't your circles. So it's really neat to, to have someone, uh, to kind of reminisce about someone like Burke Bacharach because he covered, he, he, he blanketed the world. He covered the world with his great music. So I thought that would be kind of a fun thing to, uh, to share with you guys today and uh, to talk about today. Uh, I do want to mention that next week I will, I may or may not be broadcasting. And the reason for that is that I have to call in for, you guessed it. No, you didn't. Jury duty. Yep, I've got jury duty next week, or at least I have to be on call for jury duty next week. I will know clearer and more crystal. Uh, I will be able to know more crystal clear uh, by tonight. Tonight is the first uh, time after about six o'clock that I can call in and see what the deal is. I will most likely wait till tomorrow just to be sure uh, that they are able to tell me the truth 
I get nervous because it's like you can call after six o'clock on Friday and it says, don't come in, report, you know, call in on Tuesday or something like that if you're lucky. Uh, and uh, then you you just have this, I get this nervousness that they change their mind. <laughs> they go, never mind, you have to report in. So uh, so that way I just kind of call on a, on a weekend so that there's time for them to have running room in order to share with me uh, that which needs to be shared uh, as to the update as to whether or not I need to show myself or just, uh, hi, do I come in today? Uh, with jury duty. That being said, if I do, I have to report, I guess you report at nine or something. So uh, that means I'm going to miss uh, broadcasting to you guys, but I will keep you posted on that. Should I get a case? That means that it will go through the the week. So I just am giving you a heads up because I, I don't know what it's going to be. I don't know what's going to be happening, but uh, yeah. So, so there's that very, very exciting, very, very thrilling that, uh, that I have jury duty. Yeah. You may not think it's thrilling and exciting. Um, the funny, uh, funny story. And I don't know if I've told you guys this, I did mention with the tribe that every time I get a case, I become jury foreman, not because I ask for it. I just am like, bing, you're a foreman. Uh, and I don't know why, but, uh, and then the thing that makes it really ironic and funny is I've done two or three one hour drama shows. And, uh, every time I played a jury foreman, true, true stories. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Whoa. Wow. Eh. <laughs> so too, 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 too much. Just really just, just very, very interesting. So I wanted you guys to know that if you tune in on Monday and you're like, where is she? What's up? Hopefully I'll have something up for you guys to watch. Cause I'm working on having more content this year. That is not me speaking to you live. Cause I thought you might like to have something a little bit different. So, um, so yeah. So I thought, Hey, uh, it would be cool. Um, let's see what we got here. We've got Paul. Paul says, good morning, Terry. Oh, so many good Bacharach songs. I'm not sure I can choose one, but I'd choose between I'll Never Fall in Love Again, which was mentioned in that article that I read, or Do You Know the Way to San Jose? I like that one. For the longest time as a little girl, I would go, do you know the way to Santa Fe? <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Yeah, yeah. And raindrops Jeep falling on my head. <laughs> No, I know what you meant. <laughs> oh, those K and J's are right next to each other on the keyboard. Uh, but Paul, yes, I know what you meant, uh, but is quite adorable. Um, um, raindrops keep falling on my head was just like, you know, if you look at today, would those lyrics really be something that would be, uh, that could, could work? Could we, could we do songs that are along? those lines. I remember I liked, uh, which is not, a, I don't think it's a back on it. In fact, I don't, I'm sure it's not, is uh, someone, someone left the cake out in the rain. So I used to love singing raindrops keep falling on my head. And then someone left the cake out in the rain, you know? <laughs> and I think that I can't, something like, I think I can't make it because it took too long to bake it and I'll never have that recipe again. Oh, no. <laughs> you remember that one? Which has nothing to do with Baccarat, but when I think of raindrops keep falling on my head, I automatically go to that one and think of that one as well. So, uh, so there you go. Uh, MacArthur Park says Bob Burdine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, right? <laughs> so funny, right? Yeah. I used to love singing Someone Left the Cake Out in the Rain. You know, something like, and I don't think I can make it because it took too long to bake it and I'll never have that recipe again. Oh, no. <laughs> So silly, right? It's silly, but fun silly, as opposed to not fun silly. <laughs> yeah, I tend to, I could never figure out what somebody was doing outside in the rain with the cake. <laughs> yeah, unprotected, no umbrella, you know. <laughs> 
but I just, I just thought, you know, and it was popular. It was such a popular song. Probably because it was, it was silly. And then there was a country song called Tennessee Birdwalk, but I can't remember how that went, but I remember I just loved that, that song. And then um, Rick Dees did a song. I think it was Rick Dees did a song called Eat My Shorts, a, a tribute to his ex-wife, uh, which we won't share now, but if you want, Google it. You'll you'll get a good laugh out of it. Absolutely um, funny, funny, funny. Uh, Angie says, oh my God, hello, Terry and friends. I've missed you all so much. You too, girl. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, we're talking about Burt Bacharach and our favorite songs, mine being Beware of the Blob or The Blob from the movie 1958's The Blob with Steve McQueen. Um, yeah, people thought this movie was going to be an absolute joke. And it turned out that Steve McQueen backed it and made a lot of money because it continues to deliver even now as a cult classic. It is such a fun and it's really cool to go see a horror movie that starts out do, 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 It's just, it's just, it's great. It's just great, great, great. Uh, Angie has some exciting news. She booked a trip to Disney August. <sighs> you picked the hottest time of the month, but also a time when many go. So Angie, how exciting. Congratulations. Congratulations. Paul says MacArthur Parks wasn't by Backrack, but I remember Dave Barry made fun of it once because of the lyrics. Yeah, there you go. But I mean, you see what I mean? We're we're now going into songs that we wonder what why, how, but how fun were they, right? Paul says, and? <laughs> I mean, seriously, there were, were so many fun songs that I can think of that were just wild and crazy. Um, um, walk like an Egyptian, you know, um, turning Japanese which probably isn't the title, but that's, I'm turning Japanese. Oh yes, I'm turning Japanese. Oh yes, I think so, you know. Um, and then the videos that were going with that were just fantastic. And then um, Walk Like an Egyptian. Do, 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 You know, see, we could talk music a lot, right? Oh, hey, I just saw that Iger recently and very quietly lowered Disneyland ticket prices. He also quietly, uh, well, we won't say Bob did, but uh, they they talked about firing about, what is it, 8,000 people um, from the uh, Disney, Disney, uh, what would we say, the Disney stable, the Disney area, the Disney, what would you call your job, your Disney, Disney company? I'll just say Disney company and that covers everything, right? That covers the world. Yeah, yeah, but Joe, yeah. Yeah, lower Disneyland prices. Uh huh. What was it? A dollar? Two? I'm being sarcastic, of course. But uh, any price uh, is a good one. We were talking about the gas company. I and Terry's tribe today, and uh, saying that the rebate that they're suggesting to us is not much, but every little bit helps. So we will say the same about Disneyland tickets. It might not be much, but every little bit helps. Would you agree? And uh, let me know in the comments because that sounds really good, Joe. I remember as kids that my cousins and I would howl along with the last note of Linda Ronstadt's version of Blue Bayou. Yeah. You. <laughs> exactly, Paul. Yes. Um, and that's such a great song, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yes. I love that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. By you. Yeah, definitely. 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 Oh, how about the song Don't Worry Be Happy? Do, do, do. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Don't worry, be happy now. Or any uh Casey and the Sunshine band song, which was easy to learn the lyrics because there were only four. <laughs> If you're young and you don't know Casey and the Sunshine Band, uh, it's a really fun group, uh, very entertaining group. And the songs are easy to learn. That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it, uh-huh, uh-huh. You've learned the song. You just keep repeating. That's the way, yeah. And then they they have a, a chorus, which is equally fun and just as short. So uh, 
you 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 would you would love it, you know. Oh yeah, I read it was seven thousand layoffs. Yes, Joe, and it's a heartbreaker. It is. I don't know where they're going to do it because I've noticed that there's so few cast members in some of these places. A lot more pressure on the cast members and a lot less people is what I've been noticing. Have you noticed that? I'm wondering. Um, yeah. Going to Disneyland next week. Any favorite memories? You bet. Is it your first time at Disneyland? Uh, tons of favorite memories I have. One is that we still at Disneyland have Mr. Toads. And as a little girl, I would ride Mr. Toads over and over and over and over because it was the only place I could go to hell and come back and talk about it. So uh, I love to this day, still love Mr. Toads. My favorite ride uh, when I was a little girl was uh, the Jungle Cruise. And that's where I learned about Disney Imagineers and learned how to become one. And now I are one. Um, it took a lot more work and challenges, but you just keep going through those doors until you get to your destination and never give up. And uh, the Jungle Cruise, I was on it and a cast member uh, said to me, you know, Pete, there's a place where these things are designed and created and it's called Walt Disney Imagineering. And if you really want to be a part of something special, I'd go for that. And so I trusted them. And that's what I went for. At the time when there was no internet, no computers, none of these, uh, none of these here gadgets, no such thing, no such animal. Um, it was phones that were murder weapons and portfolios that were big as my car. And you had to drive everywhere. So no complaints, just a different time. Yeah. Now you can post it on the internet and post your dream and people will come looking for you. Yeah. I really can tell you that's the truth. Absolutely. So yeah, that's a good Disney memory. Um, another special memory is I, I was, um, I am 65, which means I was able to ride the flying saucers that you see in some of the classic Disneyland books. There were these flying saucers where one or two people can float around. Like I, the best way I can equate it to you is sitting atop a, uh, an air hockey puck and just floating. You're a little slower, but oh, so cool. It felt like the Jetsons. You would, oh. But it broke down a lot because the computers to operate it back in the 50s and 60s were as big as the Empire State Building. So it took a lot to operate them. But nowadays, it would only take a chip. So I keep campaigning to say, let's go retro Disneyland and bring those little saucers back so you all can experience what joy I had when I was a kid. Um, oh, honey. Thank you. That looks amazing. The coffee was fantastic. The coffee was fantastic. So my husband has got a new cappuccino machine. And look, he made me breakfast. Oh, oh, I love that he's retired. I can't even tell you how, you know, if I added up all the breakfasts that I did since we were married, um, yeah, I could wallpaper the world actually. So how nice of him to do this for me. So sweet. Yeah. I'm very, very happy about that. Uh, tickled pink. Yeah. Tickled pink. Um, but, uh, yeah, several, I, I have a Disney memory where I went, that was the first place, uh, my boyfriend took me back in high school. My mom allowed me to double date and we definitely rode the Matterhorn because back in the day, your boyfriend could put his arms around you. So if you liked the guy, you know, you'd go, let's ride the Matterhorn. <laughs> um, uh, there was the Monsanto ride, the journey through the mighty microscope where my friend decided to walk outside the ride vehicles and he got thrown in by a security guard. That was kind of a fun memory. Um, but there's tons of them, tons of them. I've been to Disney. I rode the flying, the spaceships when they were up, not down in Tomorrowland. Uh, I rode the spaceships and uh, I rode them in the air while it was pouring rain. One of my absolute favorite things to do as uh, a Disney person you know, as a guest was to do that. And, um, yeah, so, so, so much fun. And, um, yeah, just super, super, super. Um, thank you for that question. That was very, very sweet of you to ask, but now you're going to Disneyland. So what do you want to do? Uh, let me give you a suggestion and then tons of people on here. I'll give you suggestions too, but one of them is to ride the train. Um, you'll get to do Realm of the Dinosaurs, which was there from the very beginning, and they've upgraded it a little bit. And this is what I like about what I'd like to see Disneyland do is to upgrade some of the rides that Walt envisioned, but the technology had not caught up with the vision. 
So now you can make the vision, you know, you can have the technology catch up with the vision and make it more. So a good example is the Haunted Mansion. The Haunted Mansion, originally, he wanted to have the Hatbox Ghost, and the Hatbox Ghost is there now because uh, Imagineers looked at it, wanted the Hatbox Ghost, saw technology was upgraded, and bam, there it is. Forgive me for making you sit opposite me and watch me chew, but I had to try my husband's breakfast. It's so good. Mm. I won't do this to you the whole time because I'm about to sign off here. But anyway, yay! Um, um, but that would be a good thing for you to start off with because you could see something that was from Walt's time. Uh, take a picture from the back of the castle like Walt did, and you can do that. Um, and then new rides, new things, new experiences would definitely be uh, at Disneyland. You can take a look at um, you can take a look at uh, some of the new restaurants that are there, and also the new Dumbo, which Dumbo was a way it one way in the in the fifties when it or you know in that first wave and now it got uh it got uh, a facelift in the 90s and now uh uh it looks you know um fantasy land looks stunning um and then there's the new runaway railroad in toontown you're gonna have a lot of fun things to do by then it will be working and then of course you can swing over to star wars land if you like star wars um it's there in disneyland although why i have no idea and then who knows what else you get to see uh, it's the 100 years of Disney, so hopefully it will rev up and be more exciting than most people are telling me it is right now. But uh, the shows are new and all kinds of cool stuff, but you can actually uh, see things that were happening when Walt was there and things that are not, you know, not. So lucky you and yay for you. Okay. Yeah. Michael likes the author's theme. <laughs> Arthur's theme. Yes, that's great. The one that freaked me out. They're coming to take me away. Ha ha ho ho. Hee hee hoo hoo. <laughs> Those of you just joining us, we're talking about Burt Bacharach, but then it morphed into let's talk about songs that you remember that were weird, crazy, wild, or whatever, because my favorite Burt Bacharach song was Beware of the Blob. Going to Disneyland next week, my, uh, any favorite memories? Yes. So that's what we talked about before. Tons of them. Tons of them. Yeah. No, I've been going since I was a baby, she says. Too many to count how many times I've gone. Any favorite memories you have? I'm at, I'll am i throw that question right back at you. Hello there, Jessica Lynn. Good morning. Good to see you. That is so sweet. Thank you for saying that. Uh which Disney, in your opinion, is the best one to visit? I worked and helped to build uh, Paris Disneyland, or now Disneyland Paris. So I am partial to Disneyland Paris because there's a dragon underneath. That is my fault. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I proposed it. I created it. And uh, uh, I designed it. Yeah. The dragon underneath the castle in Disneyland Paris. Just a joy. Uh, one of my favorite, favorite things to have done as an Imagineer. There are others. I worked on Big Thunder Paris as well. Splash Mountain Tokyo as well. And Tokyo has said they're going to keep Splash Mountain for a while. Lucky me. And um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. But I do say you got to go to Japan's Disneyland because um, it's stunning. Um, they pretty much gave Imagineering a blank check to design a supercalifragilistic park, and it's quite phenomenal. China is very fun, too. Um, the Pirates of the Caribbean ride there is is phenomenal, and it will be nowhere else because you need a lot of space to, to, to create it, and China is a big country. So it's a big, giant ride. It consumes a lot of area. And I didn't think I was going to like it, but I love it. So um, worth it going to China there. It's a very different kind of park because it needs to be prepared to accept. It had to be prepared to house a million visitors. Um, and so, wow, that was quite a, a feat for the Imagineers. So very cool. Thanks, Terry. 
Um, I'll make sure to ride the train to Haunted Mansion at Disneyland for sure. And Pirates is great, uh, except for the female pirate. Just avert your eyes. It's kind of embarrassing to see her. Um, but yeah, you're welcome. And there's, you know, you can put that to everybody. Everybody has so many wonderful memories. Disneyland is just a, oh, so it's just so charming and wonderful. Fabulous. Hi, Terry. How are you today? I'm good, Mike. I like the part when the game show host says you almost won the car. The losing horns come on and the contestant says, ah, wah, 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 in a country accent. Yes, absolutely. You are so funny. You are game centric. You know that, don't you, Mike? My mom and Uncle Cliff will make sure to celebrate while we're while we're down there. Thanks for advice. You bet. You bet. And your mom and Uncle Cliff will have memories, I'm sure, to share with you as well. Yeah? Yeah. Joe Penny says, could you please put the camera and microphone closer to your mouth when you eat <laughs> and drink? I want to feel like the adventures through inner space. Terry's lunch edition. No, you don't get that. And thank you for allowing me to take a couple bites. I really appreciate your understanding on that. Hi, all. Doug and I are at the Hollywood Studios. What? That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Hollywood Studios. One of the things about Walt Disney World is they have more area to do some spectacular uh, displays and things. I always love going there and seeing that Hollywood is one of my favorite places to visit. It's really cool. And then if you decide to run through there, it's also quite exciting. Yeah, really fun. Really, really fun. Um, I love what I love. Uh, Main Street Electrical Parade. Yes, yes, yes. Parade of Dreams and especially going to resort with my family, whether it's my dad's side or my mom's side. I, you know what? I'm with you on that. Electrical Parade never ceases to please, does it? Um, I always especially love the little the little characters that were separate, the caterpillar and the turtle. Walking up to you and kind of wah, 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 wah. I just think that they're wah, 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 wah. <laughs> As a kid, I thought they were super cool, and I thought they were talking directly to me. So that's really, really fun. Great moments with Mr. Lincoln is one attraction is a must-see, and it's a lovely attraction. Um, also, I don't know if you guys heard, uh, but uh, one of the cast members told me that for Black History Month, they uh, have a, um, a, was it a documentary uh, about Douglas? Um, so that could be cool as well. Um, so awesome. And then what days will I be there? What days will I be at Disneyland? Or those of you who say you're coming to Disneyland, what days will you be there? So that, so you mentioned August, what days, because you never know some of the tribe might pop in and say hello to you. Um, it's, that's the, the joy of everything. And don't forget to take a look at the Patreon page and consider joining Terry's tribe because then you can talk to these people directly. You can be with a community that's all about you and positive and upbeat and smiling and happy. And it's only $5 a month. So um, consider joining. And uh, we'd love to have you because your voice needs to be heard. Okay, everybody, I'm going to take off because I got to go see my dad. I love you guys. Hugs, kisses. Anything. Here's Angie saying she's there August 2nd to 9th, staying at the Hyatt Regency, Orange County. And I'd love to see you, Angie. So I will see if I'm in the area and maybe we can meet. Okay. Love and hugs. This is not my dad's nurse. So I'll turn it off. But I love you guys. Do something nice for someone else. It'll make you feel a whole lot better. Thank you for joining me and sharing these fun songs. Even though I had to scoot out quickly, I have to say I really, really, really enjoyed that thing. Bryce and I. We're talking about it. Hopefully we can plan a trip to see you. I'd love that. I'd love that. And your family. I hear you have a big one. So I'd love, I love children, by the way. So I'd love to see them. Don't want to have them, but I'm a great auntie. Yep. I'm great auntie, Jessica. Just ask Bryce. He knows. Have a great weekend to everyone. Enjoy your time. Angie, congratulations. And uh, we'll talk soon. Okay. Bye guys. Bye for now. I love you so, so much. What a great group you are.